The presidential recount is over before it even begins. The American South continues to burn, and temperatures around the world are falling at a record rate. Stupid climate change. It's Skywatch TV for Tuesday, November 29th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, 11 people are hospitalized in what appears to be an attack motivated by the alleged attacker's Muslim faith. The suspect was 18-year-old Somali refugee Abdul Razak Ali Artan. Police say he drove a car into a crowd of people, then jumped out of the car and began attacking them with a butcher's knife. Artan was born in Somalia, living in the U.S. as a legal resident, a legal permanent resident, that is. Investigators discovered a message on Facebook Artan posted before the attack, a rant, basically, about the treatment of Muslims around the world. Artan was shot and killed by an Ohio State University police officer. Unprecedented wildfires threatened dozens of homes and the Dollywood Resort in Tennessee. And it seems that t today, after days of wildfires burning, the major media has finally taken notice. A few snowflakes fall in Washington, D.C. That's a national emergency, of course. Tennessee Emergency Management Agency said early Tuesday that at least 100 buildings have been affected by fires in the Great Smoky Mountain area of the state part of the state that is now more aptly named than ever. 30 structures have burned in Gatlinburg. Authorities have issued a level three state of emergency and ordered evacuations of Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, and three other communities. The South has been in the middle of a months long severe drought. Some areas 10 to 15 inches below normal rainfall over the last three months. The recount of the presidential election is pretty much over, and it hasn't even really started. The Department of State in Pennsylvania says the deadline for a voter-initiated recount was Monday. Last Monday, November 21st. However, former Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein and her legal team have filed a lawsuit to force the state of Pennsylvania to count its votes anyway. The suit alleges that the election was illegal and the results inaccurate, based on research suggesting that there might have been irregularities with electronic voting machines. There have been irregularities with electronic voting machines for more than a 10 years. But there's no evidence to back up the research, and Democratic Secretary of State in Pennsylvania, Pedro Cortez, says there's no evidence of voting irregularities during the November 8th election. But again, this should all be irrelevant because the deadline to file was last Monday, November 21st. And she needed, according to the state of Pennsylvania, three voters in each one of the state's 9,163 voting precincts to force a statewide recount of the ballots. Well, so the question is, why was Stein still soliciting funds from her supporters even today? This screenshot captured just before this broadcast saying that the deadline to file was November 28th. In other words, asking for money to file for a recount in Pennsylvania after the deadline in Pennsylvania had passed. And then there's this, the note saying that uh, any surplus funds that don't go to pay for the recount would go to um, election integrity efforts. Which begs the question, is uh, election integrity efforts a euphemism for Jill Stein's bank account. And by the way, Stein has filed a second lawsuit against the state of Wisconsin. Uh, she wants a hand recount in Wisconsin, says that the automated recount might not be accurate. As I told you yesterday, the deadline to get all this done is December 19th, and experts say it's not likely that the recount even an automated recount can be completed that quickly, much less a hand recount, which would then throw the election to Congress and, yeah. Police in Norway have filed charges against 51 men accused of being part of a massive pedophile ring. Authorities seized 150 terabytes of data, including photos, videos, and chat transcripts. Police operation, the police operation revealed the sexual abuse of children as young as babies. All the men arrested live in Norway. They're investigating one who lives abroad. Authorities say these men met over the dark web, which is a part of the internet you really have to want to find in order to get there. It's a place where people can go on the web and uh, do things with much greater anonymity. This is evil stuff, in my opinion. This is more evidence 
that proves that the Christian worldview is correct, that there is intelligent, supernatural evil that wants to destroy us, and there's no faster way or easy, faster way to do it than by stealing the innocence of a child. As an example, one of the men charged in this investigation was sharing plans with other members of this group. He was awaiting the birth of his child with his girlfriend and telling other men how he planned to abuse the baby, his baby, his child, as soon as it was born. In Iraq, the death toll in the fight for the northern city of Mosul, the last urban stronghold of the Islamic State in Iraq, is raising questions about the battle plans. It's estimated that as many as 600 civilians may have died in the fighting over the last six weeks, along with dozens of Iraqi special forces troops. The Islamic State is digging in and not shy about using civilians as human shields. Any soldier will tell you, which I am not and don't claim to be, but soldiers will tell you that urban warfare, urban fighting is absolutely brutal. And it's worse when soldiers who have to make, soldiers have to make snap decisions about who is and is not an enemy combatant. Coming up, former President Jimmy Carter says President Obama should recognize Palestine before he leaves office. That's straight ahead on Skywatch TV. Coming exclusively from Skywatch TV for a very limited time starting December 6, 2016. When you purchase the new three book special investigative research collection, Abaddon Ascending, Final Fire, and The Sheer Eth Imperative from SkywatchTV.com, you'll receive the largest giveaway in Skywatch TV history. An unprecedented value of over $400 in free books, DVDs, audio files, and the never-before-released data DVD library from Dr. Michael Lake on The Sheer Eth Imperative, which includes 56 Christian classic works on PDF, all 28 episodes in Dr. Michael Lake's Understanding the Kingdom audio series, the latest version of Eastward for Windows, the three-part Into the Multiverse television series where Josh Peck interviews Dr. Michael Lake on the Sheer Eth Imperative, and nearly three hours of bonus interviews on video with Dr. Lake on The Sharpening Report. For your library or to give away as gifts, also included in this biggest giveaway in Skywatch TV history are Josh Peck's full-length 2016 DVD presentations, The Quantum Future, and Extra-Dimensional UFOs. Dr. Michael Lake's full-length 2016 DVD presentations, Jericho, The Anatomy of a Stronghold, and The Shinar Directive. The new five-part Skywatch TV special investigative report on the books, Abaddon Ascending, Final Fire, and The Sheer Eth Imperative. But that that's not all. You'll also receive the new Best of Skywatch television on DVD, over five and a half hours of the most popular episodes in Skywatch TV history. Travel through the multiverse on the new Best of Into the Multiverse on DVD, over five hours of audio with Josh Peck on the coming Technocalypse, the best-selling book, The Final Roman Emperor, an incredible five-year subscription to the Skywatch magazine, two brand new free gift books, and the never-before-released data DVD library from Dr. Michael Lake on The Sheer Eth Imperative. For your library or to give away as gifts, an unprecedented value of over $400 in never-before-offered free products. This is the biggest giveaway in Skywatch TV history, and it's yours absolutely free when you purchase the new three-book special investigative research collection, Abaddon Ascending, Final Fire, and The Sheer Eth Imperative for only $39.95 plus shipping from skywatchtv.com beginning December 6, 2016. But be advised, this astonishing promotion is limited to first come, first serve while supplies last. So it's urgent that beginning December 6, 2016, you place your order for the new three book special investigative research collection. This offer is on a limited time basis and will end without notification. So be sure to visit skywatchtv.com to follow the updates. In the countdown to the biggest giveaway in Skywatch TV history, the unprecedented value of over $400 in never before offered free products while supplies last. For more details, log on to skywatchtv.com. The world 
may be going to you know what in a handbasket, but uh, God is raising up a remnant for the end times supernatural fight. Dr. Michael Lake explains this week on Skywatch TV. He discusses his brand new book, The Shireth Imperative. For a complete listing of dates and times to watch that interview, you don't want to miss it. Log on to skywatchtv.com slash channels. And Dr. Michael Heiser shares a preview of his forthcoming book, Reversing Herman. That's this week's Skywatch TV web exclusive. The origins of evil and the role of the watchers in it. That is available exclusively. The Skywatch TV channel on Roku, the Skywatch TV channel on YouTube, and at skywatchtv.com. Former President Jimmy Carter is urging President Obama to recognize Palestine before he leaves office. He published an op-ed piece in the New York Times, says the window of opportunity to recognize Palestine closes on Inauguration Day, January 20th. He obviously feels that um, the incoming president is no friend of Palestine. President Carter may be just trying to cement his legacy as a peacemaker. To be fair, he did bring Egypt and Israel together through the Camp David Accords, but... You can't have peace when only one side wants to be peaceful. Advisors to the incoming president recommending that he downsize the National Security Council. Under President Obama, the NSC ballooned to over 400 staff people, most of whom are inexperienced in national security matters, and most of whom, well, most of whom have as their first priority political considerations, not professional outcomes. The NSC under President Obama has actually undermined national security coordination and caused conflict between various members of the president's cabinet. You see, under President Obama, the NSC took on the role of making policy instead of just coordinating policy between the branches, between, between the departments of the executive branch. According to the 1947 law that created the National Security Council, it's only supposed to coordinate, not create. Advisors for President-elect Trump hope that they can reduce the, N the NSC to its pre-9-11 size of 40 to 60 staff. Now that's the good news. The bad news is that some analysts think that under President Trump, the NSA, CIA, and FBI will gain new powers of domestic surveillance. Trump's first two choices to head up law enforcement and intelligence agencies, Republican Senator Jeff Sessions for uh, Attorney General and Republican Congressman Mike Pompeo for Director of the CIA, support an expansion of the FBI, CIA, NSA domestic spying powers. Both men are in favor of repealing a law that was passed last year that prohibits the FBI and NSA from collecting bulk phone records from American citizens, like you and me, who aren't suspected of a crime. Well, average temperatures around the world are falling at a record rate, more than one degree Celsius since the middle of the year. That is the biggest and steepest temperature decline since records were kept, began being kept. Some scientists have claimed that the record high temperatures earlier this year were the result of global warming, instead of an exceptionally strong El Nino which is a warm water current that pops up in the Pacific Ocean every few years. And which, by the way, has nothing at all to do with greenhouse gas emissions. And it might surprise you to learn that temperatures on Earth appear to be directly related to the sun. Yes, the giant flaming ball of gas in the sky actually has an impact on our temperatures here on Earth. You see, the face of the sun this month is as smooth and unblemished as a baby's behind, which may explain the rapid cooling. You see, sunspots are hotter. They're usually tied to solar flares and massive ejections of gas and radiation, which raise the temperature, raise temperatures here on Earth. This is coinciding with a cooling period here on Earth. Uh, this is part of a regular cycle. The last solar maximum during solar cycle 23 peaked about 15 years ago, between 2000 and 2002. There were a lot of solar storms, lots of solar radiation, solar flares, sunspots, and so forth. We are now in solar cycle 24 and approaching the solar minimum. In June, the sun entered its quietest period in more than a century. And some scientists are now predicting that this solar minimum may actually send us into a mini ice age, the likes of which we haven't seen in more than 300 years. It's when the 
Thames River in London would freeze over regularly. They'd have a big, you know, winter festival there. You've heard of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now meet the Leaning Condos of San Francisco. Millennium Tower, 58-story luxury condominium development built in 2009 for about 350 million bucks, is sinking at the rate of about an inch a year, and the rate of sinkage may be increasing. It's also beginning to tilt. Owners there were hit recently with two violation notices for uh, unauthorized repairs to the underground garage, trying to correct some of the problems caused by the sinking and tilting. Tower has sunk about 16 inches since it was built, and the lean is now obvious enough that it was picked up by a satellite from the European Space Agency. <laughs> That's what you happen when it happens when you build your house on sand. Jesus told us about that, huh? And finally, a rabbi in Israel suggests that modern advances in DNA testing could bring about a special vision of Messiah, one that unites all three major Abrahamic religions, Jews, Christians, and Muslims. See, simple DNA tests can show how closely connected we all are as humans. Rabbi Chaim Amsalem, expert on Torah law and a former member of the Knesset, said that uh, this may bring about a shared vision of Messiah, at the very least would show Jews who he says are obligated to help others if they're connected some way to the Jewish nation. Sadly, this is a misunderstanding of the true path to salvation, which is not tied to your bloodline. It is by grace, through faith, in Jesus Christ alone. It has nothing to do with who your mother or father or ancestors happened to be. This is an invitation that is open to all, open to you, regardless of who you are or where you are or what you've done. Please find us on the web at skywatchtv.com. Links to all of our social media sites are there. You'll find me on the web at derekpgilbert.com. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. Many ancient prophets foresaw Abaddon rising from the underworld in this very age. The satanic human sacrifice by CERN employees in front of the god Shiva was called parody. But all occult masters understand that symbolism was a powerful invitation for a doorway to be opened at CERN. The secret origins of CERN are nefarious to the core. Sergio Bertolucci the science director at CERN admits that they're trying to open a doorway to a parallel reality, and they hope that something, unknown unknowns, he calls them, will come through it. And CERN was built right over Apoliacom, where the ancients believed the doorway to Abaddon and the bottomless pit exists. Is the bottomless pit from Revelation chapter 9 about to open? The biggest and most secretive investigation ever is set to be published, disclosing what no report has done before in Abaddon Ascending. Technology today is being developed so that we can communicate with extra dimensional entities. The ancient conspiracy at the center of CERN's most secretive mission. But how will God's people, the remnant, prevail over the principalities of darkness during the final showdown between heaven and hell. Though hell may have its directive, heaven has its imperative. Increasing evidence from around the globe of miracles, healings, and prophetic visions indicate that God is already raising up an army of believers for the greatest awakening yet. Coming this December, Internationally acclaimed, best-selling authors and researchers, Dr. Thomas Horn, author and researcher of quantum physics, Josh Peck, college president, Dr. Michael Lake, investigative researcher, Reverend Donna Howell, 
and the host of Southwest Radio Ministries, Dr. Larry Spargiamino. A research finale so huge and important it had to be published in a new three-book collection. Abaddon Ascending, the ancient conspiracy at the center of CERN's most secretive mission, the Sharif Imperative, empowering the remnant to overcome the gates of hell. He always has a plan. He's playing chess while the devil's playing checkers. Final Fire is the next great awakening right around the corner. There are signs all around the world right now that we are on the cusp of the next great spiritual awakening. There is revival breaking out now where there has never been the faith. This three book collection available December 6, 2016. For more details, log on to skywatchtv.com. threatened dozens of homes and the Dollywood Resort in Tennessee. And it seems that t today, after days of wildfires burning, the major media has finally taken notice. A few snowflakes fall in Washington, D.C. That's a national emergency, of course. Tennessee Emergency Management Agency said early Tuesday that at least 100 buildings have been affected by fires in the Great Smoky Mountain area of the state part of the state that is now more aptly named than ever. 30 structures have burned in Gatlinburg. Authorities have issued a level three state of emergency and ordered evacuations of Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, and three other communities. The South has been in the middle of a months long severe drought. Some areas 10 to 15 inches below normal rainfall over the last three months. The recount of the presidential election is pretty much over, and it hasn't even really started. The Department of State in Pennsylvania says the deadline for a voter-initiated recount was Monday. Last Monday, November 21st. However, former Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein and her legal team have filed a lawsuit to force the state of Pennsylvania to count its votes anyway. The suit alleges that the election was illegal and the results inaccurate, based on research suggesting that there might have been irregularities with electronic voting machines. There have been irregularities with electronic voting machines for more than 10 years. But there's no evidence to back up the research, and Democratic Secretary of State in Pennsylvania, Pedro Cortez, says there's no evidence of Tacker's Muslim faith. The suspect was 18-year-old Somali refugee Abdul Razak Ali Artan, Police say he drove a car into a crowd of people, then jumped out of the car and began attacking them with a butcher's knife. Artan was born in Somalia, living in the U.S. as a legal resident, a legal permanent resident, that is. Investigators discovered a message on Facebook Artan posted before the attack, a rant, basically, about the treatment of Muslims around the world. Artan was shot and killed by an Ohio State University police officer. Unprecedented wildfire. The presidential recount is over before it even begins. The American South continues to burn and temperatures around the world are falling at a record rate. Stupid climate change. It's Skywatch TV for Tuesday, November 29th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, 11 people are hospitalized in what appears to be an attack motivated by the alleged attack.